Thanks, Nate. While the Friars were getting ready for their first NCAA tournament appearance since 2004, up across the Red River and over the Oklahoma border up in Oklahoma City, Coach Todd Beckerman and his standout wrestler Ophir Bernstein were looking to add to Brown University's wrestling history at the NCAA championships. With the Red Sox season already underway, their AAA affiliates in Pawtucket are just a day away from the start of their own season, where they will look to make a third consecutive run to the Governor's Cup. With a roster bursting at the seams with Major League talent on the cusp of making it to the show, a challenge this season for the Paw Sox will be focusing on their time in International League play. We have 12 minutes to get you caught up to speed on the 2013-2014 Big East basketball campaign. We've got no timeouts, no fouls to give, but the possession arrow is in our favor. Let's dive into some highlights. Hello and welcome to the historic Morgan Bowl for the 109th Turkey Day Classic as the 7-3 Marlboro Panthers come to town to take on the 8-2 Hudson Hawks. And if that pregame video didn't give you the chills, the temperature here will as it's 30 degrees at field level with the wind chill dropping us down to about 15 degrees at kickoff this afternoon though. There's more at stake than just intercounty bragging rights in the infamous Mr. Mesita Winter Hat Trophy as both teams come in unblemished at 4-0 in the Midwalk Conference. Coach Todd Beckerman and his standout wrestler Ophir Bernstein were looking to add to Brown University's wrestling history at the NCAA Championships. March 21st, day two of the NCAA Tournament. Ophir Bernstein was just one hard win away from reaching his season goal. It's never easy at the NC tournament. Every guy's tough. It's, you know, it's a clean slate. I think that's the biggest thing. Everyone's 0-0 zero and, zero and you know, whoever's going to wrestle hard for the last the three days there is going to win. I was seeded 12th and top 8 All-American. With that being said, I was still confident that I'd be able to, to, to become an All-American, get top 8, just because that's what I've been working on for the whole year. That's my goal. His first chance to clinch the elite status came in a quarterfinal bout. We were excited. You know, he had a great warm up that day, and um, you know he was ready. I was thinking one match away, and from you know achieving this goal, you know Decau just you know he had a great tournament. There's a lot of emotions into that match, and you know I, I was, you know I wish it would have gone better. Now down to his last chance, he would need to win in the blood round. Uh, I think they call it the blood round because it's. Uh, you know, it, it's win, win or go home. You know, no, no one's going to remember you if, if, if you lose in the round of 12. People are going to remember you if you're an All-American. His opponent in the blood round, Ohio State's Kenny Quartz, a man who had pinned him earlier in the season. In my, the last time I wrestled him in, in Las Vegas, I mean, I, I felt like I should have won that match. He was wrestling really solid and then kind of slipped up in, you know, a split second with Quartz, and that's, that's him. Bernstein set the tone early, getting the first score of the rematch. Definitely after I got that first takedown, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm in good shape. You know, as I'm going back to the center, I'm thinking, just, just keep doing what you're doing. You're in good shape right now. He'd add another takedown and another, notching a 7-3 to three win and a place on the podium. Unbelievable. The emotions are, they're still high. It's just, uh, you know, something that you work for pretty much your whole life. I mean, when you're, you're a little kid at, at home watching the MCAs on ESPN, thinking, oh, wow, that'd be really cool to wrestle in that tournament, get top eight, get All-American. All and when, when I grow up, this year actually achieving the goal that I, that I had throughout the whole year is just the best feeling. With his eighth place finish, Bernstein becomes just the fourth All-American in program history and the first since 1998. He'll be back next year looking for that top spot at 184 pounds. From Brown University for Ocean State Sports Update, I'm Jared Ware. With the Red Sox season already underway, their AAA affiliates in Pawtucket are just a day away from the start of their own season, where they will look to make a third consecutive run to the Governor's Cup. With a roster bursting at the seams with Major League talent on the cusp of making it to the show, a challenge this season for the Paw Sox will be focusing on their time in International League play. I think it's all about a mindset. You know, you just got to stay positive, try to keep working hard and understanding that, uh, like you said, it could happen at any time. So um, you just got to go out there, take care of work, uh, take care of business. And the best part is you got a great place to play. You got a lot of fans coming to all the games and uh, a great staff to kind of help you along. So it, it, makes the, it makes the job a little easier. But what we're all going to do is try to embrace being here, you know, while we're here. And, uh, and if that call comes to get a chance to pitch in the major leagues or play in the major leagues, that would be great. And uh, hopefully we can get up there and contribute. I mean, the goal is to have your mindset on playing for the Paw Tucket Red Sox and what we're doing here. You can't look ahead at some place that you're not at. Uh, we're all focused, we're all dedicated to this team, and uh, we're, we're ready to compete. The Paw Sox open up their campaign and start the Kevin Bowles era at manager at McCoy Stadium on Thursday night with the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs rolling into town. For Sports Team 10, I'm Jared Ware. It's the Big East in 12. Today we'll look back at the first season of the new Big East 
and Dan Marcello will give you a look forward on what to expect as the season rolls on. We'll also head to the debate desk where Stephen Ald will take on our all-star panel of guests. We'll get you ready for the Big East Tournament in Madison Square Garden. Don't you dare go anywhere. It's the Big East in 12. We have 12 minutes to get you caught up to speed on the 2013-2014 Big East basketball campaign. We've got no timeouts, no fouls to give, but the possession arrow is in our favor. Let's dive into some highlights. We'll start on January 20th in the city of brotherly love. It's Creighton at number four Villanova at the time, and it was the Ethan Raggy show. Knocks down the three, receives a pass, and does it one more time from way deep. We'll show one more for good measure. He knocked down eight of ten three-point field goals in the first half. And this was number nine on the game, which was a Creighton record for threes in a game. Final score, Creighton 96, Villanova 68. Bit of a shocker at number seven, Michigan State traveled to the Mecca Madison Square Garden to take on Georgetown. Here's two of 20 from Gary Harris as he got to the hole and finished. But Nate Lubick shows off his basketball IQ to go along with his book smarts. He gets an easy layup after the inbound. Here's another look at that heads up play. Now it's Markel Starks. After giving the ball off, gets to the hole and jams. Georgetown was up five, and Coach Thompson the third was loving his play from the Hoyas. After a loose ball, Jabril Trollick out front, 30 seconds left with the jam, the exclamation point, and the Hoyas pull off the big upset during their rough season, beating Tom Izzo and Sparty 64-60.